In this video, we want to talk about one of the most underrated actions when it comes to Power Automate Flow. It's called Filter Array. It is simple to use, but you can also take it to whole level of complexity. In this video, we want to start with very basic things that you can do with this action, and we want to take it to crazy complex levels. So stay with me because it's going to be fun. Now, let's start with our agenda and see what we want to talk about in this video. We start by basics of a filter array with a very simple example. Then we add a little bit more complexity, but still we are using filter for a single column. In the end, we want to take it to the next level and see how we can use filter array with more than one column filter criteria. So without wasting time, let's get into our first example, which is the basics of the filter array. And here we go with our example. I want to create a flow that shows people older than 20 in this array. Arrays in JSON or in an array variable in Power Automate are displayed in square bracket. So square bracket, and I have one record, two, three, four, five records, and each record has two simple properties as first name and age. So if I have this array inside Power Automate, our flow should return this record and this record. Let's see how it works. I take you to Power Automate, so I want to create a new flow if you want to follow. I go and create an instant cloud flow, and I want to call it filter array demo. And I click on manually trigger a flow. Let's create it. All right. The flow is created, so I want to have a variable, initialize variable. Come on, buddy. All right. And I want to call it var underscore my array to filter. And as always, I want to take a copy of this variable and I put it in front of this initialize so it is more understandable. Type is array. And I just need a copy of this array, which I already have it prepared. So I take a copy of it and I stick it here. Now in the modern designer, after you save this guy, it's gonna format it like a very good looking array, love it. So let's move on with filtering this array for the records that we need. To do that, I go here and I add filter array. I pick my filter array, come on buddy, select. And I want to get the values from this var my array to filter. And the filter query is going to be the column that I want to filter, which I have to use an expression here. So put a forward slash here and we pick insert expression. So this is my condition. I need to get the current item of the array that I am processing. And for that, we have a function called item. Just like that, it refers to every single row that we want to check the condition with. And if you see the example, I'm looking for a column called age. So I bring it back and I say dot age. Don't look under the suggestions. As you can see, still this guy does not have a clue of what is inside this variable. So you have to type it yourself. It doesn't show you under the suggested items. As soon as it is done, I can say add. So the item age is added here. And I want to say it's equal to, no, I'm not looking for equal to, I'm looking for anything that is greater than 20. Just like that. So let's save it and see if it actually works. Great. Looks like we have an issue with the designer. Let me switch it back to the classic designer and see if it is actually done properly. This new designer is like an orphan kid that Microsoft doesn't want to play with it, assuming that AI will help you a lot more than the UI. At least that's my assumption. So I go back again to the modern UI. Still the issue is there. Probably if I just close it and open it, it's going to go away. Let's see if we can test it. Manually test run flow, and I click on done. All right, seems like it worked. Although a piece in the designer is missing, let's click on the filter array 
and check the output. This is the input, that is our original array, and this is our output. As you can see, it contains only Ali Raza with the age of 23 and Puya with the age of 34. Everybody else has been filtered out. Now you can use the output of this array to do whatever you like. This was our very basic example, but let's take it to the next level. Still, I want to use it for a single column, but I want to take it one level higher. So instead of first name and age, now each record has two properties again. It has name and age, but name by itself is a record. So name contains first name and last name. Probably you guessed where I'm going with this. I go back here and I say, show me the items that last name is Jones. And now if you look at the list, there are two records with the last name Jones. All right, let's see how we can do it. I go back to the same flow and I want to add another variable. Initialize variable. The name I want to call it var underscore array level two. And I just get a copy of it, bring it back here. We are good. Type is going to be an array. And for the value, again, I get a copy of this and paste it here. Again, it looks a little bit messy, but who cares? Assuming that I save it and everything is going to be good. So as you can see, it is well formatted. It's not complaining. It doesn't give you any error that it's an invalid JSON. So this guy is going on my nerves. Let me get out of this flow and come back to it and we will follow. Seems like that didn't solve the problem, which is all right. Now I want to use filter array. So I have another filter array added here, filter array one, and this guy is going to get the values from my array level two. And this time, as you can see, I'm looking for name, last name Jones. So just like before, I come back here, I pick an expression. And again, I'm referring to current item dot name, which is this one dot last name is the one that I'm looking for. So dot last name and I click on add is equal to Jones and let's say save it. And now my filter has everything it needs. Let's give it a shot and test it. Manually test run flow and done. Here is my result. So I click on this filter array one and if I scroll down, you will see for the body of the output I have Sarah Jones, and if I scroll down, I have David Jones. Everybody else has been filtered out. Beautiful. So as you can see, we successfully got these two records that they match our search criteria. Now let's take it to the next level. We want to use filter on more than one column. So this time I want to use exactly the same array, but I want to search for the items that have the first name as Ali Reza and the ages above 20. Because that's the same array, I want to use the same flow. So let me click on edit and click on filter array. Here is the thing. As you can see, filter array can only accept one parameter. It's not like condition that you can add more and more conditions. So only one. So how can I filter this based on more than one column? Well, this is how it works. I get rid of it. I get rid of it. I don't need this guy anymore. To filter based on more than one column, we need to get into advanced mode. As you can see, it has a weird syntax, so just get rid of it. We don't need this. Now I need to enter a condition that returns true for the records that are my desired records based on my filter criteria. So I start by writing an expression here. So let's say insert an expression here. Now I can combine any condition that I want. So first condition that I want is item. First name is Ali Reza. So name dot first name is equal to Ali Reza. And inside Power Automate equal is not just an equal sign. You need to use equals function. 
So I can say the first parameter of equal, which is the first name, is equal to the second parameter, which is Ali Reza. Just like that, if I click on add and run it, let's say save and test it. Come on, buddy. Test manually, test, and I click on run flow done. And you see it returns Ali Reza and Ali Reza, right? Let me go back on edit again and I click on this guy. Again, I take it to advanced mode and you can see it gives me something weird. So again, that's a bug in the designer. Sorry guys, I can't do much about it. If I click on this guy and I try to take it to the expression, it doesn't do much. Microsoft, please go ahead and fix it. That's quite annoying. If I take it to classic designer, like let's say save and switch. And if I click on this one, probably you have better luck and if I click on edit in advanced mode, it's not any better, but in reality, I can take a copy of the formula that I already wrote. So let me take a copy of it and I go back to my modern designer and complete it. And I click on this guy. I don't need this one anymore. I say click in advanced mode. I completely get rid of it. It has a problem and we have to deal with it. So I click on this insert expression. This is my first formula. The second condition is age is above 20. So let me go to the second line. And the second condition is going to be greater. The parameter that I'm looking for is item dot age should be greater than 20. So greater returns true if first parameter is greater than the second parameter. Now, as you can see, we have two conditions. Condition one checks for the name. Condition two checks for the age. And now I can go back right before equals one and I can combine them using an AND function. So open the bracket. I remove the second bracket. Between the two, there is a comma. And right in the end, I close the bracket. So the formula should look like this. AND first condition, comma, second condition, and I close the bracket. Let me take a copy of this formula. I go back here and I replace the entire thing. Let me get back and come back. Probably I have better luck. Insert expression. All right. And I paste the formula here. Looks good. Let me click on add and I click on save. All right. Looks like it is done. Let me just test it manually. I click on test, run, done. Now, before we see the test results, in this video, I used quite a bit of expressions. That is something that lots of people shy away from it, but to be honest, they are quite easy. I have a course on Udemy called Master Microsoft Power Automate Expressions in two hours. Yes, you heard it right. It's two hours. The course is actually three hours, but an extra hours working on introduction and familiarity with JSON expressions. And if you are lucky enough to get this course within the next five days of this video release, it's free. Just scan the code on the screen and you can get the course. Now let's get back to our test and let's see what we got here. Here on the second one, if I scroll down in the output, it returns the person whose name is Ali Reza and the age is above 20, nobody else. Let's check our array. We have two records with the name Ali Reza but only one of them has the age above 20, and that's the one that our array returned. And here is a conclusion. This modern designer, as much as I want to say I like it, it's still clunky. Microsoft needs to do something about it. Quite often you have to deal with undocumented features, AKA bugs, that they are still in the designer. When you write a formula, you save it, you get out of it, you come back to it. It sometimes messes that up, but here is the thing. When you're dealing with complex formula, like the one that we did, most of the time it doesn't mess it up. So it keeps it as a nice filter. You can click on it and you can still have the formula, edit it, make changes and save it. But it's still hit or miss. So you got to gamble on that. When you have a complex formula and you want to work with it, instead of losing it, always take a copy of it, keep it somewhere else before you click on update and pray for your formula to stay intact. All right, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know where the like button is. And if you look around, probably you will also find the subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber. That's gonna make my day. And well, if this video didn't make your day, probably leave me a comment. At least give me ideas on better videos. That's gonna be helpful for all of us. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.